Today we're going to be hiking through the dense and dark forest of the Arari Gorge. Today we're in Geraldine, which is a town in the Canterbury region of the South Island and it's surrounded by some really awesome hikes, only about 20 minutes drive away and the hike that we're going to be doing today is the Orari Gorge Track. The Orari Gorge Track is situated right next to a Department of Conservation campsite and we don't really know much about this track other than its name, so we're expecting to be walking alongside a river gorge. But the deeper we get into the forest, we realize that that is certainly not the case. And like you should never judge a book by its cover, you should never judge a track by its name. The Orari Gorge track is an hour and a half loop track, meaning that we're going to be finishing our walk right where we started it, which is pretty handy. The beginning of the track follows an old bush tramway used to extract logs. How did this tramway make it through this really thick bush is just beyond me. The Orari Gorge track is a classic Kiwi walk. It starts really well maintained and then becomes rough really quickly and the bush becomes thicker as we go forward. There is a lot of Totara, Kaikatea, Matai, Kanuka. It's a beautiful regenerating forest with heaps of wildlife. It doesn't take us long for us to spot one of New Zealand's iconic native birds. This one's called the fantail, or in Maori it's known as the piwaka or piwaka waka. And it's named after its beautiful fan-like tail, which allows it to do all these acrobatic movements in the air to catch some bugs. And this one looks like it has caught something already. And the reason why the fantails do so well in New Zealand and the fact that they're the most common native bird is because they produce a large number of young and feed their young up to 100 times a day. That's no joke. We eventually pull ourselves away from watching that really cute fantail and the further along the track we get, the rougher it gets. There's a lot of muddy patches, a lot of roots sticking out, but thankfully there are a few bridges to cross the streams, which I really didn't expect on this track the way things are going. Nevertheless, we really do like these sorts of hikes where it is a bit rougher because it makes it feel more like an adventure and the fact that you feel more like you're going into the wilderness. These hikes start getting steeper and steeper as we move forward and it's really cool because it becomes a real challenge. Plus the vegetation surrounding us is absolutely amazing and we always take the time to spot a lot of unusual things in New Zealand forests such as this really weird thing. Laura and I have no idea what that is but if you do know comment below because we really want to know what the hell this thing is. We think there is a spider that has cocooned itself inside a little bit of bark and he's hanging down the trees and making its way down to the bottom of the forest. But we're really not sure what that was. Moving on more along the track, we are seeing heaps of roots on the floor, beautiful ferns everywhere. It's the typical New Zealand forest. And the track is finally getting really rough. There is quite a few dog tracks which are very well signposted and very well marked all along, but they are a little bit more rough than the classic New Zealand track that you will find in most hotspots for tourists. And this challenging track is becoming a little bit much for Laura. Although we are challenging ourselves to tackle 365 activities around New Zealand in only 365 days, we have spent the last 25 days doing all sorts of activities but no hike, which are usually quite physically demanding. So right now she's huffing and puffing. Looks like there is an opening, Laura. It's just so re relentless. It doesn't stop. After being in the forest for almost an hour, we finally see a clearing. There is daylight ahead of us, and we all of a sudden end up on the top of this huge mountain with views of surrounding mountains and forests around us. And I'm super happy to find that there's a bench here. Like I said before, we had no idea what to expect from this track, but it turns out what we thought was a river gorge track has an epic viewpoint at the top of a mountain. So after soaking in the views, we're then heading back into the forest to what we assume is now the downhill section of this walk. But turns out the downhill section is pretty slippery. <laughs> Woo. Okay, don't get rid of that now. Stop playing games. <laughs> Here's why. 
Here's why I chose the steepest side. First, or what I thought was the steepest side first, so we didn't have to go down here like that. The downhill part of the track is really not for the faint-hearted. We are sleeping a lot on the muddy floor, as well as all the leaves which are just right on top of it. It feels like the entire forest is working together into making it as slippery as possible. So we spend a lot of time hugging trees, hoping that they will hold on while we are trying to make our way downhill. When the gradient of the track is finally becoming flat and it's a bit more bearable, we can start getting some speed and finishing to round up this whole loop track. But not before checking out some more New Zealand native bird which has a waiting for us in the middle of the trees. And this time it's a beautiful bellbird. The bellbird or Kori Mako in Maori is really famous in New Zealand because it has a really distinct noise and it's really fun to listen to. The bellbird is also a nectar feeding bird which is quite interesting because that means that they mostly use their tongue and if you look really closely we actually can see the tongue of the bird which is absolutely fascinating. Laura is spending a good quarter of an hour taking picture of that beautiful bellbird which is not too shy. For once a bird is willing to be photographed, that's awesome. Then we hop back onto the camper van toward the little township of Geraldine for tonight. So it's been 25 days since we've done a hike in New Zealand. Which is crazy considering there is heaps of hikes and there has been loads of hikes since we have been traveling. That day we lasted a hike at Tunnel Beach in Dunedin. But this just goes to show how varied the activities are in New Zealand and how much there is to do that in 25 days we haven't even needed to do a hike. Of course, we always love to do a hike, but when people say, hey, we have this you can do, we go do it. Yeah. 